Hey everybody, it's that time of year again, marking the end of 2014. I have for you guys a brand new Let's Play that probably won't carry us to the ending, but it is a brand new Let's Play, nonetheless. So you might see this in my uh, video, but on a mysterious space station, orbiting high above the Earth. Cortex, remind me why I keep you around. You have failed me one too many times. Uka Uka, forgive me. I've been wasting all these years trying to vanquish that brainless bandicoot. He is of no importance to us. We want to take over the world. I've heard it all before, little scientist. What is so different this time? Trust me, Uka. I have a little plan to bring Earth's puny inhabitants down to size. So, looks like freaking Uka Uka and Cortex are at it again. So I knew you guys like went crazy for my Crash Bandicoot and Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex. So I did a GameCube and I did a PlayStation 1. Why not do GBA before I do Crash Bandicoot 2? So we're going to be obviously doing a new game. And so here it is. At last, my planetary minimizer is complete. Earthlings will bow down to my superior intellect. <laughs> Finally, after all these years of abuse, the tables have turned. Who's the little guy now? I, Neocortex, am your ruler. You look up to me. <laughs> I have finally won. Now nothing can stop me. Not even that little bandicoot. Crush. Coco, the world needs your help. Cortex has shrunk our planet to the size of a grapefruit. We must stop him. It looks as if Cortex is using the crystals to power his shrinking machine. Crash, if you can find me the proper crystals from around the world, I think I can build a device to reverse the effects. Good luck, Crash. You must find the crystal so we can put an end to Cortex's evil scheme. So, that is the intro. Uh, Cortex has shrunk Earth down to size of a grapefruit. Apparently it's a grapefruit, but if you look at it, he was holding it in between his index finger and his thumb. So it was clearly more like the size of a, a grape, or a lemon, or a passion fruit, or something of the smaller variety. So anyways, we have five levels we can choose from in the hub world. And uh, each one has gems and a crystal. Crystal, you need to beat the game. Gems is if you get every box. And then, finally, if you beat a level, you can go back and do a speed run and try and get an Ankh. But I will do those right before we take on the final boss. So anyways, let's go on to the first level. Okay, so I actually have everything set up the way I want it to. So, uh, yeah, let's let's do this the way it was intended to. Hang on, I, I, okay. Just gotta make sure I had everything set up right. I'm like, uh oh, please don't say I have the wrong button there. Because I always configure my controllers. And prepare for a lot of the bigger games too, because I uh, found some stuff out on Steam that I can uh, that I can actually do. I forgot Steam existed. I went back and rewatched Newfie Bonga's uh, Shovel Knight LP, and I was like, wait a minute. I can download games on Steam, so Binding of Isaac may be coming soon. The first one, of course. I I rarely like to play the uh, the second game first, but you know I have done it before, just because certain games were highly requested versus others. Like no one ever requested uh, Crash Bandicoot one first, but then after I had did the other Crash Bandicoot, they're like, well maybe we do want you to do Crash one. So that's when I went back and actually redid Crash. Well, did crash one for the first time. I was actually recording it a few days before that, before you guys actually brought it up. And I... I was failing so bad at it. Then, since I had some practice, I went back and started playing it. And it actually went a lot better. Now, uh... Is there anything I really missed? Uh, these C blocks over here are checkpoints. If you get three Uka Uka boxes, you get invincibility, but it only lasts for a short time. So, remember that when you get it. And you go right through boxes, so if you need to uh, do something like a specific jump pattern or something, good luck with that. So yes, we have 32, or 36 out of 42 boxes. I, I don't know why I always, how did, oh, I always forget that there's a box there. 
Uh, these blocks, yeah, you have to hit them quickly, otherwise, uh, they'll turn to steel blocks and then you cannot destroy them. Ever. So, 100%, and if you guys notice, okay, now you guys can see it, right underneath the J of Jungle Jam, there's a blue cross with a red gem in it, that is called an Ankh, because it's Egyptian, and you need to beat the level as fast as possible to get that Ankh. This one requires 35 seconds and 50 milliseconds. Can you do it? I don't know. Next we have Shipwreck, one of the underwater levels first introduced introduced in Crash Bandicoot 3, uh, um, Warped. I almost forgot what it was called there. I was going to say Wrath of Cortex. I have Wrath of Cortex on the brain because I was doing my compilation video and I took pieces out from that. I'm using an analog stick because you guys know I do like to play on GameCube and PC for a lot of stuff. So it is a little hard, I should have set it for the D-pad, but I didn't. These levels are very generic though, pretty low box count for most levels. And then on top of that, there's no bonuses. You just mainly gotta watch out for pufferfish, sharks, mines, and I think sometimes eels. I don't know if we see any of the eels in this level. Oh, actually we do. They can be destroyed, but they're a little sporadic with their attack patterns. So they might give you a few problems. Uh, sometimes you also find green blocks called nitro and red blocks called TNT. TNT you can jump on and then you have three seconds to get away before it detonates by itself. And uh, nitro you can't jump on but you must find a switch to uh, get them all. Now, I can't believe I took damage back there. I lost our uh, Aku Aku, which is a real bummer. I, I do kind of hate when we lose them. Uh, so yeah, see the commentary is better like I said it was was going to be in my compilation video. The compilation video is going up before this one. I'm uploading these the same day. I'm going to skip a day of Diablo uh, and do this because Diablo has really long upload times because it's an, an extremely HD game with really high quality cutscenes. So it does take longer. Like if I were to start doing uh, the next gen consoles like I used to, those things took forever. So here's the gem, and we beat the second level, 100%. So the time for that one is a minute and 17.70. That one, I think we could probably do. I think it was only like a two minute video, or two minute level doing it normally anyway. So next we have Temple of Boom. So you see that second gem? Well, we can actually get 100% in this one because we need a color gem. Whenever you see two silver gems, it means you're going to need a color gem to beat the level. Uh, I don't think it's here. I think it's more towards the middle. We can get the one gem, but we can't get the second one. In those crash boxes, 13 up there is for lives. Uh, you pretty much won't have to worry about lives in this game because they do give you a lot. And trust me, it's really hard to run out of lives. Unless you're extremely bad at the game, which in some cases in this game, it can be pretty difficult. But nothing where you should actually ever get a game over. The sequel to this game is pretty difficult in some spots too, but like, once again, nothing that you should ever get a game over for. Now I forgot to say, these are bonus rooms. Uh, you collect boxes and lives for the uh, next part of the, or the regular part of the level. And you try and get them all, get 100%, get the gem. Um, and if you die, these also count as checkpoints. So that's also pretty handy. These were also introduced in, uh, well, the bonuses were always in Crash, but they weren't like more platform ones, I think, until Crash 2, Cortex Strikes Back. But that's when I think the Crash games got really good. Crash 1 is actually known to be one of the hardest uh, PlayStation 1 games ever made. And I really do think it earns that title. Because those games are hard like a mother ever, man. Some of the most difficult, or the most difficult game, not some. Crash 2 isn't too bad, you still can't use the analog stick, but then finally in Crash 3 they introduced it. Because Crash 3 I think came out the time either Crash uh, Spiral 1 or 2 did, and Spiral 1 and 2 actually had the analog feature. Which I thought was pretty cool, so that's why I play Spiral so easily. I hum this, I used to hum this at work all the time, this theme song from this game. Crash Bandicoot actually has some of my favorite uh, music. Uh, do you guys want to actually see uh, update videos? Yes, you guys do. I know you guys used to kill the heck out of those. Those are some of the most viewed videos next to my original God of War video and my Mario Kart 
Twitch Double Dash videos. Make sure you get that life first. And there's a little tiny fly for some reason harassing me around here. Oh, okay. This is, I think, where the, uh, where I think it's the red gem that will leave. Ow, there's a stupid little fly who is freaking harassing me as I record this Let's Play. Darn little fly. How dare you try and harass me when playing Crash Bandicoot. You know this is not an easy game. Then why harass me? Yep, we need it. Oh, well, I kind of lost my Aku Aku, but... Turns out we didn't need to go that way anyway. There were just absolutely no boxes. But it's worth checking and not dying, but I guess dying was the fast way to get back. Only two more boxes. Okay, one's up here on the platform. I think the other is over by that lizard, if I'm not mistaken. Just, like, on the other... Ah! Thank you for the life that I lost. That I shouldn't have lost. Good news about these games is it's all side-scrolling. So it shouldn't be too difficult. At least, I hope it's not too difficult for you. I do recommend this game, though. 100%. So, once again... Almost 100%. 1 minute and 270 for that. Next is Frostbite Cavern. Uh, a tribute to Crash Bandicoot 2. With their ice levels. And this one you can also ride a polar bear, and they, these ones generally have a lot more boxes than the jungle levels or other levels of the such. So this is like the one with the riding mechanic that all Crash games, including Crash 1, actually have. Ah, uh, the inertia with the ice though can be a little bad, so be careful when you're on the ice. So whenever you see that arrow, be prepared for a polar bear race away from a yeti. And if you hold down the B button, it's to run. Uh, if you hold down, or if you press A, it's to jump. A lot of the time, you only need to jump if there's boxes, but if there's no boxes, then jumping could be pretty dangerous, because you never know what you could run into. Okay, destroy that box, sir. thank you. Okay, I don't think you can destroy boxes overhead. I think it's the second level to, of, of, the, of the running around like this that can actually get pretty difficult. Okay, you can only get hurt by the penguins or the electrocution. The bombs just slow you down. Oh, I almost jumped there instead. Okay, good. Now we're invincible again, so we can just run through everything. Because, you know, that mask looks... And invincibility in this is really... is goes by really quick, so... Be prepared. If you think you can be invincible for a long time, you're mistaken. Oh, did you see... Did you guys see that nitro dodge? No! No, not where Nufi Bonga died as well. Why does everybody die in that spot? I was watching his Let's Play of this game today. Even though it's old. Oh, are you serious? Goody goody now. Oh yeah, this is bull game. This is bull. Bull like bullion. I love cow. Okay, there we go. We finally made it. Um... Yeah, I just went back and watched it, I'm like, you know what, I've had this game, I want, I've been wanting to play this game forever on my channel, so I'm like, I'll just watch it, you know, I'll get in the mood to play it, and then I'm like, yeah, this is it. I was actually originally going to play uh, Spyro Season of Ice, but then I'm like, you know what, I know this game a little better. I know Season of Flame, because that's the one that I bought originally for the Game Boy Advance, but because we couldn't find the first one, so I bought the sequel. And that's why I know that one better. The only reason I know that one better. Okay. Let's get out of there. Okay. So, we gotta get that bouncy block down there first before the metal block. One, two, three, four, five. Bouncy blocks are generally always five. Sometimes they like to throw you off, so be careful. That's all 22 boxes. Let's get out of here. And I think there's only one polar bear running part in each each level, so you don't have to worry about them too often. One box! And there it is, after we kill some seals and dugongs. Stupid Pokemon. And what's level 5? Just in slime. I think we have time to do just in slime. You know, and, and they very have very pun-filled uh, title references. Like, you know, just in time, just in slime. Um, this game isn't as good as the originals, uh, two, the second and third game are big on the names. Or having names that rhyme or start, 
start, uh, both words start with the exact same, uh, letter. Like, Medieval Madness, Toxic Terror, you know, stuff like that. Oh. Ugh, I hate when that happens. There we go. Uh, nine boxes. Oh, you know what? I'm actually going... No! Why? I think the only problem with that is, yeah, you, you don't actually die, but you lose Aku Aku, which can be a real bummer. Because, you know, Aku Aku is extremely important. Especially in this game. I don't know why I bother hitting that. I don't think you actually need to hit it in the first place. Hopefully we can get another life in here. Um, there we go. I don't care about the life. I just want to get the box before it turns into a steel box. Or a crate. Uh, pretty much the same thing. Boxes and crates. Okay, I don't need to do anything special with these. I, I'm kind of hesitating whether or not to do the boss in this video or not. Uh, I might do it. Okay, I don't care about the life. I just want you to destroy him for me. Okay, good. Oh, snap. Okay, and there's the last two boxes. Just wait for them to get destroyed. And we can leave. There's a, for some reason, I remember there being a part of this level where there's like a lot of like empty space, no enemies or boxes. And I can't remember where in the level it is. Uh, I think it comes up pretty soon, or it might be towards the ending. This level is not hard at all. Uh, what, you, what I usually do is wait for him to get right in the center, and then I slide attack him. Sliding kick. The only problem is, is there's a lot of nitro around here, and since I don't have Aku Aku, it can be a little hazardous. Okay, I want that life, thank you. 29 lives. Got 99 lives, and a... No, what's not one? I, I try not to swear in my videos. Try and keep everything PG for my fans. Oh god. Get that before it changes. So, oh, this is the part where we need to come back. This can get tedious. Because I think just up here is actually where the uh, nitro switch is. If I'm not mistaken. There it is, yeah. Now we gotta go all the way back, cause guess what, the nitro doesn't destroy those two boxes that we need to get. So honestly, slide jumping is the best way to get around. At least it's worth a life. Just remember, it's worth a life, guys. Sliding jump! Sliding jump! Okay, what else is there to talk about? Um, what do you like about this Crash game? Well, I like that side-scrolling, which makes it generically easier for new gamers to play. Ugh, Jesus. Uh, what I don't like about it? Very generic enemies, very rep uh, rep repetitious gameplay. Ooh, I actually got that. Um, could've had better level names, sometimes better level design. Ah, uh, could've opt out the polar bear running. But overall, it's a really good game. Out of 10, I'd probably give it 7.5. I know most people do the review of their video of the uh, game after their Let's Play, or their walkthrough, generally walkthroughs, but still, you know. And here's all the boxes. Woohoo! Woohoo! And there's her crystal. Oh, this might be the, is this the spot where it's like a little empty-ish? Yeah, like look at this. There's like nothing there, but the ending of the level. So that allows us to take on the first boss, which is Dingo Dial. We won't do that in this episode. What we can do though is I can show you the load and save feature. So we press start, and then we can go down to save game. We are at 13% in the first world. Not bad. Which is pretty awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to give it a thumbs up, rate, comment, subscribe. Remember, subscribe for new videos, and that's it guys. See you later.